Greenbrier. There'll be people to argue with you that there's uh, not much use for Greenbrier other than protecting old Brer Rabbit from Brer Fox. But actually, for food value, for white-tailed deer, they'll come along in the spring right after it uh, first starts leafing out and they'll go through and they'll take off the top couple of inches and that's about it. Uh, I don't know, uh, I couldn't tell you, someone here maybe with wildlife could tell me the food value on the berries, it does produce a berry that may be eaten by some critters and birds. But mostly it provides cover for lots of critters because you, no one wants to walk through this stuff, including bird dogs or people, horses or whatever. Uh, Greenbrier, there's a number of different species of it and I couldn't tell you exactly the species on this one. It's in the Smilax genus, a what we call a, a heavily woody vine uh, with a heck of a root system. That's why it's hard to kill. Uh, here's an example, excuse me, with, a, with the tuber. And I've seen these tubers be stacked on top of one another, much like potatoes with potato eyes and almost as big as your fist. So you've got to get the herbicide not only into the stem, but down into that tuber, and that's hard to do. Then this one is a good example of showing you underground stem, which we call rhizomes, connecting a lot of these together. So when you're looking at a fence line or out in the middle of the pasture, you don't know what one plant is. You just have to kind of Jerry Clower method. You spray in there amongst it, hoping for a little relief. Uh, for those of you that don't know Jerry Clower, he was a Cajun comedian. Here, the one with the uh, tuber on it, you can show the, the rhizome too, but your ground level here on this one is about right here. Some of them can be deeper, uh, maybe even a foot deep or so before you get, get to the tubers. Uh, I've worked in uh, our part of the world further north in some sandy soils and coming in after they had bulldozed some areas and was able to collect a number of the big tubers that were as much as two feet underground. Uh, so uh, Mother Nature designed this thing as a survivalist and it is. We have no broadcast, aerial, or even ground broadcast recommendations in our, in our book, and we, we, uh, if we did, we'd list it. But we do have the Brush Busters recommendation, and that's using the Herbicide Remedy Ultra right here, the one you've seen used before in, in mixtures with mesquite. But we use this by itself in diesel. And we do recommend the diesel with this. Being an ester, too. <clears throat> the mixture calls for 25%, as much as 25% remedy. And that leaves 75% diesel. If you're in sandier soils, you can always go on to the label a little bit. I would advise you I'd experiment with less than that. Maybe 15 to 20% remedy if, you, if, if you've got it growing in sandier soils. Usually we can kill things like this a little easier in sandier soils that, that don't hold water as well. Tight soils like around here, your clay soils, I would still tend to use that uh, heavy rate. And I'll demonstrate a little bit to you here. Now, I still don't know a good method if you've just got acres and acres of this stuff in your pasture, it'd be hard to control. But if you've got scaffolded in on your fence lines, then you can use the technique I'm about to show. Obviously, if it's scaffolded on your oaks or desirable trees, you can't, <laughs> you can't spray that. Uh, because if it's growing up all your oaks, about all you can do is pull it loose and and maybe try to try to dig some of that up. Again, remedy could is pretty good herbicide for 
basal treating about any of her brush species. So, and it works on the Greenbrier. You can use your four-wheeler with a, with a I, I would recommend a, uh, one of the, the holocone nozzle tips that you can open and close. Very seldom do you ever see Greenbrier stems that are that far apart. So you, if you've got lots of Greenbrier, you might even consider using a fan nozzle tip. Uh, you cover lots of, lots of stems in a hurry if you want to do that. If it's just so thick that you hardly see uh, space between them, that would work. I think this is still the X2. The recommendation here is 25% Remedy Ultra and 75% diesel. And I encourage you to spray in the winter. You don't have a, maybe not a whole lot going on, but maybe some feeding. I'd wait till January, February, maybe December. A lot of your leaves, a lot of your leaves have already fallen off your green briar. A lot of your grass is dried up along the fence line. And you can see the canes. Not only can you see them, but you can get, get to them a little bit better. And essentially we use a basal stem technique. We spray about a foot up from the ground level up. Try to hit the canes, hit them long enough to get wrap around of the herbicide around that stem. I've seen guys, I've seen a rancher with two four wheelers, one going down either side of the fence to ensure that they were getting all the, all the stems in the fence line. So that's, that's a consideration you could do too. I'm not sure this has been pumped up. Again, like Bob said, Dr. Lyons, you may have to stomp the grass down a little bit just to, I'll try not to spray Dr. McGinney's. You might could shut this down even a little bit more. You wouldn't actually be spraying the root system, but I'm trying to show you what it should look like when you've got wrap around. That's all there is to it. You can get control at other times of the year if you can see it and reach it. But again, uh, uh, try to work things in your favor of when you can best uh, get the application on the basal stem itself.